Thank you, Deborah Choir, for your precious choral anthem. And we did not know how precious you were when we had you, but it's, such, it's something to be so thankful for that we can listen to this choral anthem on site. And let's pray that the Deborah Choir will be able to give praise on site in the sanctuary. And today, the title of the sermon is Korea's First Election, May 10th General Elections. On April 10th, 2024, there is the 22nd National Assembly election. And except in cases of crime or special reasons, anyone over the age of 18 can run for office and vote. Over the past 20 years, when we look at the voter turnout in Korea's National Assembly elections, it has exceeded and been around 50 to 60 percent. But there was a time when the voter turnout reached 95.5 percent during general elections. And this was three years after the liberation on May 10th, 1948, the Constitutional Assembly election, which was the first democratic election of Korea. And this Constitutional Assembly election was to create and establish a constitution. And the purpose of this election was to elect members of the National Assembly to create a constitution for our country, which did not have a constitution at the time. This election was the first democratic election in our history with the principles universal, equal, direct, and secret, and became the foundation for establishing the Republic of Korea. And based on this election, the Constitution of the Republic of Korea was created, the president was elected, and the government was established, and the government of Republic of Korea was recognized as the one and only legitimate government on the Korean Peninsula with the approval of the United Nations. However, North Korea insists that it is the only legitimate government on the Korean Peninsula, that they are the only legitimate government and continues to teach its citizens. So what is the truth? Today we'll find out about the historical facts through volume two of the Modern and Contemporary History of Korea series. First is the background of the May 10th general elections. We must go back to the year 1943, and there was a declaration in Cairo. There was a Cairo declaration, and the United States, Britain, and China made a resolve that Korea will become freely independent at the appropriate time. And for this, they will carry out the operations that are necessary to obtain Japan's surrender. And in August 1945, the Soviet Union declared war on Japan and occupied the Japanese troops in Manchuria and advanced to the Korean Peninsula. They were moving south to occupy the Korean Peninsula and Japan. And on August 15, 1945, the United States drew the 38th parallel line and the Soviet Union was to accept the surrender of the Japanese army in the north and the United States said it would accept the surrender of Japanese troops in South Korea. And the actual purpose of the Soviet Army, actual purpose of this was to prevent the Soviet Army from continuing to advance south and prevent the entire Korean Peninsula from becoming a communist. And this 38th parallel was actually a military demarcation line. And residents freely crossed the 30th parallel. But what Soviet Union wanted was to permanently divide the Korean Peninsula and establish a pro-Soviet government in North Korea. So discussions were held to resolve the issue of how to establish the Korean Peninsula as an independent country after it was occupied by the US and Soviet troops. And this took place in the Moscow Trilateral Foreign Ministers Conference on December 16 to 25, 1945. And the foreign ministers of United States, Great Britain, and the Soviet Union met in Moscow, Soviet Union, and seven issues were discussed. And there were decisions regarding the Korean Peninsula. 
and this was announced on December 28, 1945. And when we take a look at what was declared re regarding the Korean Peninsula, first was the establishment of a provisional government on the Korean Peninsula, and second, to help with this, a joint U.S. and Soviet committee will be established. And third, four countries, the United States, Soviet Union, United Kingdom, and China will administer trusteeship for five years. But even before this joint committee, the U.S.-Soviet Joint Committee was held, North Korea already took steps to establish its own government. And let's take a look at the main events on the timeline. And this North Korean flag, if you see here, it took place in North Korea. On February 8, 1946, the North Korea Provisional People's Committee, the North Korean temporary ruling body was organized. And all North Korean documents stipulate that North Korea's Provisional People's Committee was the People's Democratic Government. So it was actually that during this time, North Korean regime was already established. And when you look at the banner celebrating the establishment of this committee, it says the Provisional People's Committee is our government. And in March 20, 1946, the first U.S.-Soviet Joint Committee was held but adjourned indefinitely in May. And Dr. Lee seung -man made this remark in Cheongup on June 3, 1946. Now we see no sign of the indefinite adjournment of the Joint Committee resuming. And we are anticipating a united government, but it is not possible. So we will organize a provisional government or a committee, at least in the South. So the Soviet Union will evacuate the North on north of the 38th parallel, and we must appeal to the global public opinion. Lee Seung Man knew that North Korea had already established a communist framework through the Soviet Union and was ruling effectively already and had an independent government and said, since they have the will to communitize even South Korea, we must prevent this, and therefore we must form a new government. And North Korea established the North Korean People's Assembly on February 17, 1947, the highest legislative body, which functioned as the House of Representatives. And on February 21st, the North Korean People's Assembly organized the North Korean, reorganized the North Korean Provisional People's Committee and decided to launch the North Korean People's Committee, taking out the word provisional as the central government agency. And the chairman was Kim Il-sung. And Kim Il-sung said regarding the reorganized committee, our party has set forth the task of furthering further developing the people's government, the weapon of a revolution, to fulfill the mission of the socialist revolution. Thus, we held the first historic democratic election and established the North Korean People's Committee. It was the first proletarian dictatorship created in our country. Kim Il-sung said already that this committee was a dictatorship, that it was a government in nature and function. And he said it was the first democratic election. And when we look at the picture, there is a white voting, voting ballot and a black voting ballot, ballot. And this was held where people were watching. And he claimed that this was a democratic election. And afterward, in 1947, May 21st, the second U.S.-Soviet Joint Committee was held, but it collapsed and fell apart in July, and the trusteeship agenda was aborted. aborted. And on September 17th, the United States submitted the Korean Peninsula issue to the United Nations. And on November 14, the United Nations decides to hold general elections in North and South Korea under UN supervision to establish a unified government. And despite this, North Korea continued to do acts that divided the nation. And on November 18, North Korea established a committee to draft a provisional constitution. And on December 6th, 
they had a currency reform and began issuing new banknotes. And on January 8, 1948, the UN election observation team arrived in Seoul and began its activities. And they tried to work in North Korea, but Soviet Union and North Korea's Kim Il-sung and Park Hyun-young ignored the UN resolutions and strongly opposed the entry of the UN election monitoring team. So this election observation team could not function in North Korea. However, if the Soviet Union refused, there was this general movement that if they refused, South Korea would hold its own elections. So on February 7, 1948, the South Korean Labor Party staged a riot opposing independent elections. And on February 8, the North Korean military organized the Korean People's Army. And on February 26, the United States again submitted a proposal to the UN to hold elections only in areas where elections were possible on the Korean Peninsula, and it passed. And meanwhile, the Jeju April 3rd incident occurred, and North Korea adopted a draft constitution on April 29th. And North Korea was already preparing to become an independent country. And after this all happened on May 10th, the general election was held only in South Korea. And on August 15th, there was the Declaration of Establishment of Republic of Korea. And on September 9th, as if North Korea had been waiting, they declared the establishment of Democratic People's Republic of Korea. And North Korea says that the division of the Korean Peninsula has become completely solidified due to South Korea's independent elections and established a unitary government. And even in Korea today, there are people who claim that. But North Korea itself defines the North Korean Provisional People's Committee and the North Korean People's Committee as the first regime on the Korean Peninsula. So it is contradictory to say that South Korea established an independent government first. They had already completed the creation of an independent nation, but postponed the official declaration of its establishment to shift responsibility for the division. The division was not solidified because of South Korea's independent elections, but because North Korean Communist Party refused to hold a unified election for North and South Korea, and the establishment of a government to unify North and South Korea was aborted. So North Korea is responsible for losing the golden opportunity to unify the Korean Peninsula. Big point number two, interfering with May 10th independent elections. When May 10th was confirmed as the date for South Korea's sole election for the founding of Republic of Korea, Park Hyun-young issued an order of the leadership of the South Korean Labor Party to campaign against the May 10th election and disrupt it. And since they had already established the government in North Korea, their goal was to communistize the entire Korean Peninsula and establish the Democratic People's Republic of Korea. And they had to prevent the establishment of a legitimate independent government in South Korea at all costs. And it became difficult for Park Kyung-young with the intervention with the intervention of United Nations. So they launched a desperate armed struggle. And at this time, they prepared a fierce sabotage effort. The South Korean Labor Party prepared a fierce sabotage effort to oppose the independ independent election. And the February 7th incident, they, they held riots to oppose South Korea's independent election. And when we look at some of the slogans that were promoted by the Labor Party at this time, first, they opposed the UN Korean, UN Korean Commission that is carrying out the plan to divide and invade Korea and opposed the establishment of independent government. And they said, leave it to us Koreans to establish a unified democratic government. And they tried so desperately to prevent the May 10th election. 
And this February 7th incident lasted for two weeks from the 7th to the 20th. And there were deaths, 15 police officers, 15 election officials, and two candidates, and a total of 230 people. And they were injured. And 8,479 people were arrested. And participants were 300,000. But the police quickly suppressed this February 7th incident. So the South Korean Labor Party was surprised, and they decided to hold this protest against the May 10th election on Jeju Island, which is far from the mainland and difficult to suppress. In the early morning of April 3rd, 1948, the South Korean Labor Party's People Guerrilla Corps attacked 12 police stations on Jeju Island simultaneously and raided the house and offices of right-wing groups, and they murdered people and government offices, churches, temples were attacked, destroyed, and set on fire and causing damage, including killings and kidnappings. And at the time, the protesters even threatened the National Assembly candidates to resign. And they went to villages every night shouting opposition to the May 10th election and selected election committee members and right-wing figures to be killed. There are too many atrocities committed by these people throughout Jeju Island, but let's take a look at the damage suffered by people related to the National Election Commission. At 1 a.m. on May 1st, they attacked the House of Election Commission Chairman Yi won Baek and mutilated his body with bamboo spears, sickles, and axes and killed him. And at 9 a.m. on May 8th, 10 people stormed to the House of Election Commission Chairman Kim kyung jong But when Kim kyung jong was not there, they stabbed his mother Park Sae and daughter Hee Jin with bamboo spears and set the house on fire. When Kim kyung jong's wife Kim Juk kyun was at her neighbor's house and saw her house on fire. She came with her two-year-old son, but she was stabbed to death. And they massacred Hyun Jong Chun, the wife of Young Chang, Kim Young Chang, chairman of the National Election Commission in Indara Village. And on the day of voting, members carrying the Type 99 rifles and followed by 50 people with bamboo spears surrounded the polling station and confiscated the electoral register and smashed the ballot boxes. And 30 mountain people came down to Hyangsa village in Susanli, and they disrupted the polling place and shot at the people who fled. And Ko Shin Gwan's mother, Ko Ak Sun's mother, and Kang Jong Bo's mother were shot, and they died after vomiting blood. And the afternoon of May 10th, they kidnapped three people, including Daechung leader Kim Bong-il and his wife and the president of Sanye, and for supporting the election and tied them to a pine tree and stabbed them with large spears. So they attacked the polling place. They set fire and bombed the Jeju office. And they, there were many things and events that took place. And the South Korean Labor Party did its best to brutally kill its supporters and families of the May 10th election and prevented voting through violence to invalidate the election. And although the situation was extremely chaotic ahead of the election, the May 10th election was held as scheduled. And third, the results of May 10th independent election and the establishment of the Constitutional Assembly and the government of the Republic of Korea. First, we'll take a look. The right to vote was given to all the citizens over 21 years old. And the right to run a campaign was given to all the citizens over age 25. And there were 904 candidates at the time. All the citizens were given the right to vote, and this includes women. On, in other countries, there were movements and were movements that asked the women asked that the women have a writing right to vote. But our country 
gave the right to vote for women right after our liberation. And there was a female candidate as well. And the person who was to vote had to register for their voting. And 96.4% registered to vote. And out of that, 95.5% voted. And that's how they elected. And let's take a look at the records to see how our first voting was like. It says if you choose your representative and send him to the National Assembly, it says if you want to vote for the general elections, go to the register office and register your name. Go to the voting place on voting day. Stamp or sign using your thumbprint on the voter list. And when you go to the polling place, you will receive the polling paper and envelope. Go into the secret place and vote for the candidate you support. Put in the envelope and seal it. Put the envelope into the ballot box. It explains very kindly. And these are citizens reading the voting information. And they look a little bit confused. And it said they were a little, there was a little confusement because it was the first election. And this is the propaganda materials for the candidates. And this candidate says, put, put this mark for number one and vote for him. And this is the proof of voter registration. And the polling place, this is an example, they gave out the polls, the voter voting paper, and they voted in the secret place and put it in the ballot. And there's the picture and the name of the candidates. And women also voted. And mothers with their children and grandfathers also voted. And all of this proceeded under the supervision of the UN Temporary Commission. And the elections, the results of the general elections was out of the total 300 members, 200 were elected, excluding the 100 that were allocated to North Korea. And 198 out of 200 members of the National Assembly were elected. And the reason for this is because two seats were invalid due to Jeju April 3rd incident. The first district and second district of North Jeju were invalidated due to low voter turnout due to extreme sabotage. But there was a re-election one year later, and the remaining two seats were filled. After the general election in 1948, on May 31st, the first National Assembly opened in this country, and the term of office of the constitutional members of the National Assembly began. And they decided that the country's name was the Republic of Korea, with the total of 17 votes. On July 17th, the Constitution and Government Organization Act of the Republic of Korea was promulgated. June, July 20th, President Lee Seung man and Vice President Lee si young were elected. And on June 24th, there was an inaugura inauguration ceremony. August 4th, first cabinet was formed and launched. And on August 15th, the third anniversary of liberation, President Lee Seung man declared the establishment of a government at the central office. And this long-awaited first liberal democratic republic of Korea was finally launched despite the chaos. Now this new government of Republic of Korea sought to have its establishment officially recognized by the international community, community with approval from the United Nations. But once again, North Korea tried to sabotage this. And lastly, number four, let's take a look at the only legitimate government on the Korean Peninsula, the Republic of Korea. 
Park Hyun-young, North Korea's first deputy prime minister and foreign minister, sensed that the UN General Assembly was likely to recognize the government of Republic of Korea as the only legitimate government, and so he sent a letter to the Secretary General of the United Nations on October 7, 1948, and he wrote down false facts to claim that the North Korean government is the unified legal government of Korean Peninsula. He said that there was an absolute majority of North and South Korean voters that participated in the South and North Korean general elections, with the, which did not happen. And there was 99.97% of North Korean voters and 77.52% of South Korean voters. But the UN General Assembly rejected this, and on December 12, 1948, the General Assembly Resolution Number 9195 approved that the Republic of Korea was the sole legitimate government of the Korean Peninsula with 48 votes in favor, six against, and one abstention. And North Korea sent another statement opposing the UN decision in the name of Park Hyun Young on October 14, 1949. And he said if the UN continues to do this and recognize the government of Republic of Korea, the Korean people will use all means and methods to oust the UN Temporary Commission on Korea and unify the country. In response to this, the UN General Assembly reaffirmed that the Republic of Korea is the sole legitimate government of the Korean Peninsula on October 21st. And despite this ruling that was made numerous times, the North Korea's Communist Party leadership did not inform its people. How do all the literature, including Kim Il-sung's anthology, textbooks, workbooks, history books, dictionaries, and news propaganda recorded and taught? They say the founding of Democratic People's Republic of Korea and the establishment of Kim Il-sung regime are the only legal state and government on the Korean Peninsula that was achieved through the general elections of North and South Korea in 1948, which reflected the overwhelming support of all residents of Korean Peninsula at the time. Let's take a look at some of these manipulations, fabrications, and distortions of the North Korean documents. The independent election held by U.S. imperialists and their minions in South Korea in May 1948, Chuche 37 was virtually destroyed, which was not true. It was held, place, held very successfully. However, the U.S. imperialists fabricated the results of the election and replaced the National Assembly with pro-Japanese and pro-Americans and national traitors and went on a rampage to manipulate the public government. In response to the crisis of this national division, the great leader, Grand Marshal Kim Il-sung, presented a policy to establish a pan-Korean government without delay in June Chuche 37, 1948. Also, they say, in our country, the Democratic People's Republic of Korea is the only country established through the North-South general election that is, by the unanimous will of the entire Korean people in the North and the South. So the Democratic People's Republic of Korea is our only legitimate country. And this is how it is taught in the first graders of advanced middle school. This is what is written in their textbooks. And with this on this website called With Our People, which is North Korea's propaganda website, there was this article that said, South Korea's democratic political parties and social groups also released statements one after another, supporting and welcoming the founding of the republic. Newspapers in Seoul placed the portrait of the great chairman Kim Il-sung and widely reported on his elevation as prime minister of the republic's cabinet. Slogans of long live the democratic people's republic of Korea were raised in cities including Seoul and patriotic fighters hoisted the Republic flag even at Seoul's central office to show absolute support for the Republic. And it's such an absurd claim. And uh, as I was researching this, I, I was very out of words and I hear many people in the choir making remarks, but they blocked external information and blocked the people's ears and eyes, and they made it impossible for them to know the truth, and they transformed the lie into the truth. 
And even now, September 9th is called and celebrated as one of the four major holidays in North Korea. And is it only North Korea that falls prey to such propaganda? Even in our country, there are people who believed and followed the propaganda during the Jeju April 3rd incident. Kim Dar-sam, the commander of the time, advertised the following to the South Korean Labor Party members. Dear citizens, the North Korean People's Army has crossed the 38th parallel and is moving south all the way to Suwon. If you wait just one month, Jeju Island will be liberated. Then a fair and equal world will come where Liberation Army becomes the police and land is divided and divided equally. The people of the province of Jeju believed the words of the South Korean Labor Party members and gave them money and slaughtered cattle and horses to be used for guerrilla troops. And at the time, the news about the mainland situation for Jeju Island was delayed. So these naive residents were easily deceived by the South Korean Labor Party's propaganda. The word propaganda was first used in a neutral sense, but after two world wars in the 20th century, it acquired a negative meaning of lies and instigation. The greatest dictator, Adolf Hitler, is considered the master of bad propaganda, and his remark regarding propaganda says, propaganda must not serve the truth, especially in so far as it might bring out something favorable for the opponent. Violence and lies are the most important tools for communist politics. They kill people to achieve their will and purpose, and it doesn't matter if the facts are manipulated, fabricated, and if they fool people with lies. But God says in Psalm 5, verse 6, You destroy those who speak falsehood. The Lord abhors the man of bloodshed and deceit. Also in today's scripture text, Proverbs 12, verse 19, it says, Truthful lips will be established forever, but a lying tongue is only for a moment. The Communist Party, built on lies, may seem to gain power for a while on this earth, but it will surely be judged by God and disappear from this earth. So as believers and citizens, each of us must not lie or act falsely or even be deceived by lies. Ephesians 5 verse 6 says, Let no one deceive you with empty words. It says, Do not be fooled or deceived. And in Proverbs 15 verse 8, The sacrifice of the wicked is an abomination to the Lord, but the prayer of the upright is His delight. I believe that God will rejoice in the prayers of the honest saints of Pyongyang who are alert and pray for the Liberal Democratic Republic of Korea and will surely protect our country and for the completion of redemptive history. We must not forget that May 10th general elections, which became the foundation of the founding of the Republic of Korea, was held on the foundation of countless sacrifices and blood. So how shall we prepare for the 22nd general elections? The posters from May 10th general elections 78 years ago tells us very well it says, Dear compatriots who love our country, the votes that go into this box determine our future government. Make sure no one is left out. Register first and vote together. Let's build a good country with good votes. Voting is a patriot's duty. Abstention is disgrace to the people. Let's pray and prepare for this 22nd general election and on April 10th, when each and every one of us exercise our rights and duties as citizens of the Republic of Korea, I believe that God will choose the honest leaders that He has prepared. Let's pray together. Father God, we thank You. You've allowed us the word of life during these end times. And not only that, you've allowed us to have a heart that loves our country and patriotism through the modern and contemporary history of Korea series. Even though the, the country is in chaos, please work so that leaders who make you glad will be chosen during this election and with the bloodshed and sacrifice of our ancestors, we remember the first elections 
and on April 10th elections, may all the citizens vote for this country and work and help to establish a good country. And we believe that the darkness in the church must be gone in, in order for the darkness of the nation to be gone and may the church shine brightly so that all the darkness in Korea will all be gone and only the light of the world will shine forth in this country. We pray all this in the name of Jesus Christ with thanksgiving. Amen.